Sporting up in the top right hand position as the blue Terran player representing my insanity. It is none other than Jack G. And his opponent down in the bottom right, the green Zerg from Dignitas. It's Teffel. Now, as this stands, Jack G is 2-1 up. Teffel brought back the series a little way in the last game, where Jack G opted to go for a proxy 11-11-2 racks, followed up by, I believe it was 5 racks worth of marine production, just massing marines out, pulled all his SUVs, and basically Teffel defended by getting a bailing nest in time and just morphing bailings at the last second. Connections were made. Green acid was sprayed everywhere and Jack G's marines suffered a terrible defeat and he just GG'd out. Probably GG'd out with a smile on his face though. If you if you go for a proxy 11-11-2 racks into mass marines, you do actually, even if you lose, you smile. I, my example of that is the StarCraft 2 player Fuza. He goes for a proxy 11-11-2 racks every game and if you've ever watched his stream, you will not ever meet a happier Starcraft 2 semi pro. He just sits there smiling the entire time at his happiness, laughing to himself. It's amazing. I would love to be that happy playing Starcraft. Generally, I just sit there as a slightly nervous wreck, trying to make the game work the way I know it should, but I just can't seem to coordinate my hands or my thought processes in real time fast enough. Anyway, this game looking pretty standard. Jack G just opening up CC first as part of his wall off. Following on with the barracks. May see a gas added on. That's how he seems to like to do it. The other option of course is to add in a couple more barracks. Just to be on the safe and secure side. Meanwhile sending the SCV out to go and get a little bit of scouting information. Uh, just checking to make sure nothing too funky is going on. Hasn't seen an overlord yet. And everything pretty much good actually. So um, as this goes everything is fairly alright. It's probably... A good game to see what goes on in terms of more longer game strategy. Whether Teffel will decide to go for something such as Roach Hydra, which we saw in game 1 and 2, which didn't work in either of those games. Or if he'll mix it up and go for the more traditional Zergling Baneling play. We'll have to keep an eye on it, but hopefully we'll see fairly soon exactly what's going to be coming down. So, this bunker getting placed on the low ground. Of course, this reveals to Teffel where his opponent's spawning. Knows that it's going to be probably a command center first as part of the wall off. So Teffel just droning heavily, trying to get into a good spot and keep things looking fairly safe. Now, no gases for Teffel yet. That could result in a quick third base like we saw on Derelict Watcher. Could also mean that he's just going to pump a lot of drones and get double gases a little later. But Jack G coming in to scout anyway. This is going to give him some good information about those gases, which is really what he wants to see. Uh, does manage to get in. Just managed to see the second gas with 3 HP on that SCV. Unfortunately, he dies for his troubles, but definitely a worthy sacrifice. Meanwhile, third CC coming down from Jack G here. So I really would like to see Teffel take his third hatchery, but he's not going to. He's getting down the extractor. Unfortunately, that means that Jack G is going to get a good economic lead. That's really the, the long and short of it. So if Teffel now really delays his third, which he can sometimes do when he goes to that extractor. Yeah, he's going up to three extractors. It's going to be a most likely a roach bailing all in now. He needs a lot of gas, so that's why we're seeing them all come down. Even though it's a bit late. Wow, four gases. This may not now just be a roach, big roach push. This could potentially be an early layer into very fast mutalisks, but that's not too commonly seen. So, interesting to see what Teffel is going to try and throw out here. Of course, his opponent very low on the marine count. Uh, only five there at the moment, so a big push could be quite good. But the third base also coming down from Teffel. So this isn't an all-in or anything like that. He's just getting a lot of gas very quickly. There comes down the lair. Certainly looking like it could be very fast mutalisks. Um, evolution Chamber though is on its way, uh, so it could still be the Roaches. Gonna just see if a Roach one does get side. Yeah, it's gonna be Roaches still, there it is. Um, so yeah, this is a lot of gas coming down. Hydra's probably gonna get added into the mixture too. And there's just so much coming down in terms of gas for Teffel at the moment. Four gases this early on, huge amount of income, double the gas income that Jack G currently has. Meanwhile, Jack G now just adding on a couple of extra barracks, keeping a single Marine on patrol here just to make sure that any overlords that try to sneak in 
would get taken out. Trying to hide the fact of the thirds there, but even with just one Marine, the Overlord would easily see it. You need more than one Marine there to stop it. It'd also be very hard for Tefl to get a Marine to come in from this way. That's why the Marine's sitting patrolling here as opposed to up here. Because of the spawning positions, Tef would have to send an Overlord all the way up and then all the way around through. It's more likely to send it up to here and then across. So just smart play by Jack G there. Tefl getting the 1-1, but melee upgrade this time. So he's already altering his build from game 1 and 2. Gonna still have a metric ton of gas. But he's investing a lot of that in Roaches. But this Roach play isn't going into Roach Hydra. He wouldn't be getting the plus one attack if he was doing that. So he's just going to go and try and knock on the door. See what's happening. Got an Overseer coming through. Sees the double engineering base. First good scout. Just needs to confirm the existence of that third orbit command. And then he's really seen everything that's coming down in Jack G's game plan. And there we go. So it is scouted down. He's aware suddenly that Jack G's very low in terms of defense. But still producing a lot of roaches. So this is going to be a fairly big push. Road speed is on its way. Lings will be following it up. Now, having a lot of lings with 1-1 one, one means good damage will be done. If a push comes out and there are speed lings on the way. But what's interesting is that there is no speed. Speed has not been started. Instead, we're seeing the infestation bit. Which is still making me question that without speed, why are we getting the plus one melee attack? Unless this is some kind of rush up into ultralisks. But... Even then, it's the infestation bit timing makes sense for that, but it doesn't it doesn't kind of work. Still, not getting speed is just mind-boggling. There's going to be a reason for it, but it's not like Tefl was really short of the gas or anything, so he could have afforded to get it. Basically, I'm confused.com right now, and yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Jack G gets great scout there, sees that obviously the infestation bit's coming down. Pathaging lands getting researched. Um... Yeah, so I still don't know why the plus one's coming in because obviously fungal growth doesn't benefit from melee attack. Infested Terrans don't benefit from upgrades full stop. And roaches certainly don't benefit from melee attack. So, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see exactly how that works. There are some Zerglings now coming out. I can't help but feel that speed missing is a, is a mistake because you usually do see a lot of links following this up. But without speed, they'll take so long to get over there. Can they actually do much damage? Well, double bunkers coming down from Jack G now. He realizes that he's got some problems. Is he going to be able to hold? Well, in come the roaches now. Zerglings in production. But those roaches were on move command. They get annihilated. Half of the army down. That was a big misstep from Tefl, unfortunately. The rest of Jack G's army now tearing through. Um, and well... Full retreat from Tefl. Jack G couldn't have hoped for much more. Resources lost 500 compared to 2,000, all but a tiny Wincy bed. That is definitely not what Tefl would have wanted. He's getting his hive started now, so he is going to be able to get Ultralisks fairly soon. Um, but yeah, Infestors on their way out. This is all still cool, but Zergling Speed is not done yet. Um, we should see plus 2 2 coming down fairly soon. The Carapace upgrade, of course, needed since there are. Good number of roaches there, so prioritizing that is quite a wise move. But Jack G's economy, 69 workers on both sides. And with the mules, that puts Jack G ahead in terms of income. Now, upgrades, 1-1. One, one, obviously, 2-2 two, two getting started on both sides. Pretty similar times, except plus 2 infantry attack. Quite a long way ahead of any of the other upgrades. So that's going to be good for Jack G. Spore cool is coming down for Tefl at the moment, as well as the 4th base. Taking the 4th closer rather than just expanding away from his opponent two chains of thought on that but considering the drop heavy play that we've been seeing um obviously got to be a bit careful jack g gonna come and drop up into the main base of course the spore cooler helps but there's so much area where these medivacs can drop down that it's pretty safe jack g coming straight in though drops out of range while pushing in multi prong attack is gonna be very tough to deal with because he's so reliant on those investors, quick little pick up, boosting down towards the third. Another drop in its way through. Another push heading towards the third base down to the bottom left. But Jack G getting some nice damage done. Gets fumbled though, so no retreat on the cards. He's gonna lose all of this. But has it been worth it? We keep an eye out, but it looks like in terms of the workers killed, only three workers went down there. The resources lost leveled out a good amount there, so not an efficient trade for Jack G and Tefl now going for the counter push. The 2 2 upgrade's not yet done, but the Ultras Cavern coming through. Ling's attacking from every angle. Unfortunately, the Kaito massive Widow Mine hits decimate that Zergen count. And now, of course, the Infestors sitting back home. They weren't in the fight. No fungal growth coming down to aid those. 
But the fungal growths are just really important for the ultralisks. It allow them to close up the distance and really get omnoming their way through. So, currently, those infestors still just trying to put on a bit more pressure. But no ultras going to be out for at least another 55 seconds or a minute once the ultralisk cabin's finished and reaction time's factored in. But Jackie, he's pushing in towards this fourth. That fourth base will die, um, almost certainly. Even though a fungal growth came down, Jackie's committed to this. And he is just putting so much pressure on Teffel. Unfortunately, doesn't have any links here. The Roach is dying. Six infestors remain. But they're getting taken out. Jackie is just powering through. And that means that Teffel with very little remaining. 35 army supply to 128. Teffel, unfortunately, doesn't look like he's got much option, many options available to him now. As Jackie closes in on the kill. Killing off all the overlords. The tongue face Jack Teffel taking this defeat quite well. Um, and well, Jack G just plows on through. Massive supply block. Good manners by Teffel there, saying that Jack G played well, which of course he did. And well, that was.